Hi, my name is Dan Fishman. I am a Libertarian candidate for Congress in the 6th District of Massachusetts, and you guys are watching Two Hotheads, Where Activism Happens. Back live, Two Hotheads, Where Activism Happens. You know that song, don't you? I sure do. That's, that's our, our one and only Tupac main, main man here on this show. Ca California. California love. love. I guess, I don't know, we're sending some love out to the West Coast, even yeah. though... Where's the Massachusetts love equivalent? We need to record it. Solo sex is gonna is gonna do it. <laughs> Jonathan Richmond Roadrunner. I think well, that's, that's true. We or or it. New England, oh, also yeah. by Jonathan Richmond. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. Mike so we <laughs> was making noises. <laughs> no, that's actually Frank Capone who's on the line, who's uh, who's waiting Ooh. to talk, and he's been waiting patiently. Um, and we are here to welcome on welcome him on the show to talk about uh, Leah Lynn Plant, who uh, is a Pacific Northwest grand jury resistor, um, who sp who refused to uh, to speak out at a grand jury, refused to incriminate uh, her comrades, and during uh, investigations around a uh, some some windows being broken in quotation. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, and Frank Capone's here to talk about it with us. Welcome, Frank. Thanks for having me. How you doing? Doing good. So this um it's it's not just Leah um that's in um in jail. She's joining two others, um yeah. Matt Duren and Catherine Olgenek. I think I said that right. Yeah. And um they had already been in jail for not rolling or not talking, you know, not offering anything other than their names. Um and something interesting that I didn't really understand existed, but um it doesn't matter whether or not you plead the fifth at a federal grand jury. Um, you're in contempt if you don't answer the questions. Yeah, especially if they uh, grant you immunity, which right. she was granted immunity. We actually uh, started off the show kind of talking about this with the uh, candidate for Congress, Dan Fishman. He knew all about this. Yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, you heard right? that? Right, yeah. Yeah, I listened to the show. Yeah, no, he was awesome. Yeah, he was. I'd never heard anyone talk about how the AMA limits the amount of doctors. And I was like, wow, this guy, all right. Yeah, he yeah. really knows. Like, he, he was had my head spinning on things that I never thought of, too. It's just very, he was really good. But uh, with this case, you know, she's she's looking at, she's 24 for four years old. Um, she's going to be in jail maybe for the next year. Is that right? 18 months, yeah, for the, for the length of the grand jury. Eight? Which, by the way, was set up before May Day, before any window was smashed, this grand jury existed. This grand jury was set up on March 2nd, um, and obviously May happened May 1st. You know, the windows were smashed on May 1st. And and the the question, you know, that we, we, we're not going to be able to find out, because grand juries are secret proceedings, but why are they investigating this group? Is it political? It seems like it's totally political. How can well, it not be, right? Well, it's absolutely 100% a political witch hunt, and it's, it's not the first time it's happened, you know. I did a little bit of research on it, and um, in 08... Um, at the Republican National Convention, a bunch of anti-war protesters were raided by the FBI Joint the Anti-Terrorism Task Force, Task Force, and um, were then brought before federal grand juries and refused to speak and were jailed because of it. Um, so this is a systematic thing that um, the country is doing to um, activists who don't, you know, share the same political beliefs as the status quo. And it's, it's really a frightening thing, especially when you have something like the NDAA now being the law of the land where you can get black bagged and dragged away without a trial. So um, it's, it's you know, pretty dangerous and sad times going right now. Yeah, and it, I mean, it, to, to see something like this happen where, it, you know, the, the, when you say anti-terrorism task force. Right, where Food Not Bombs is considered a terrorist cell. Yeah, in this anarchist group in Seattle, they haven't, they haven't done any terrorism. They haven't uh, blown up any... Buildings. They haven't like. I thought the no, terrorism no, was smashing be... the window. It's terrorism. Yeah, I they thought, committed I... an act of terrorism. They smashed the window of a federal courthouse. I mean, is that it? I mean, is That's that terrorism, man? Yeah, I mean, they, they were playing baseball in the street. Smash goes the window. Everyone's a terrorist. So, so they're Al Qaeda. Is that is that basically, basically what the speaking? So, like, I was looking it up, and um, I found this thing called uh, Holder versus Humanitarian Law which was a Supreme Court case that said, like, even if you, your organization just, like, talks to a supposed terrorist group and said, hey, you know, I think that you guys should be, you know, less violent and, um, you know, or nonviolent and figure out your differences with your enemies in, in a peaceful way, which is what Humanitarian Law Project wanted to do with the Kurdistan Workers' Party in Turkey and the Liberation Tigers in Tamil, Tam, Tamil right? Media, anyway, yeah. yeah. And so both those organizations are considered apparently terrorist groups by the government, 
So humanitarian um, law, all of a sudden, boom, is coercing, you know, um, working with terrorists, even though they're just expressing their First Amendment rights to talk to another human being and, or another group and say, listen, I think you should do things differently. You know, I think you should try peace and, and, and not be violent. And now they're, you know, considered you're know, colluding with terrorists. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's so out of that- control. It w- I mean, I, yeah, I already extended an invitation to, the, to this group of activists. They got a few different websites to be on this show. If we have them on our show, are we going to be next dragged into a grand jury? Are we going to be labeled terrorists? If I don't know. I have. To, I feel like I should say, listen, I'm not an anarchist. I'm like a concerned citizen that cares about people's individual rights to stand up and believe whatever they want as long as they're not harming others. And I don't really think that anyone was harmed, you know. So, I mean, do, do we have to worry about it? You know, if know. we just talk about this, are we going to be put on the list, too? Are they going to be having grand juries for us? I mean, it's, it's, who knows? And you who guys, knows? Yeah. Because there was, there was one grand jury where this guy was supposedly linked to letting out 300 minks because it was an animal group or whatever, and they didn't want um, the minks to get shaved and all of that. So they let them go. And the only link that they had was a corporate tip about an email that went to a news station, and it was from like Jordan or whatever, was trying to be a fake email, but they went after this guy whose name just happened to be Jordan, who was an animal rights activist, and they charged him with um, animal enterprise terrorism. It's outrageous. <laughs> so, so now activism, political activism it's is now terrorism. terrorism. Yep. So like if the founding fathers were here today and they threw tea in the Not harbor. Not even political activism, just being a juggalo. Yeah. I mean, if you're kidding, right? If, 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 <laughs> If the founding fathers were here and they were throwing tea in the harbor, would we, would the government label them as terrorists? It seems like they Absolutely. would. Absolutely. There's, there's a YouTube video that you can find that shows um, somebody from the FBI, I believe it is, or the ATF, giving a slideshow uh, project, like projector um, talk about how the founding fathers were terrorists. It's unbelievable. It, it's, <laughs> it's online. <laughs> it, just, it just gets more... Like yeah, you you um, I'm not sure you I'm not sure who actually started this group, but I I found out about it because all my friends like yourself and Garrett and Nizzy were a part of it. But you started a Facebook group. Was it you who started this Facebook uh, event for Free Leah? No, someone else started it, and they made me a host. And um, I think she should be free. You know, I, I I think it's ridiculous and repugnant to to think that we you know are in this supposed free society where people get locked up for not ratting on their friends and not wanting to, you know, have a a table talk with some grand jury and be dragged in and have to answer questions when they did nothing wrong. I mean, we're not talking about a flashbang in the middle of the night, you know? Yeah, we're not talking about murdering people. We're not talking about, you know, robbing them. And, you know, it's just, it's it's mind-blowing to me that a single pane of shattered glass is going to put three people away, at least, you know, if not more, in jail. Uh, But none of them will be in charge with that. Not one of them would be in charge with vandalism or anything. They're all just charged with contempt because they refuse to answer the questions, even though they ha- are expressing their, their right, supposed right, to remain silent, to plead the Fifth Amendment, to not incriminate themselves. But still, they're sitting in jail right now. You know? and, and that's considered a, pri- a, a defense priority right now. I mean, that, that clearly we need to defend ourselves from a, a couple of uh, vegan straight-edge anarchists from, from right? uh, Portland, I mean, I Oregon. I am so frightened of these people uh, who don't eat meat. It's as, as frightened me. as I am about juggalos, <laughs> of, of juggalos, exactly, you know? Right? It's, it's unbelievable. And, fi- yeah, Food Not Bombs, too, is, is labeled a terrorist organization, which is similarly, you know, like feeding people is dangerous and, uh, you know. That is dangerous. They might yeah. have the strength to fight back. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's what's so insidious about this, and that's why I'm glad you're, you're, you're here to talk about it with us because uh, people need to know about this, that it's not, you know, pe- in ordinary citizens – are being targeted for absolutely no reason. For being politically engaged for and being active. Po- yes, for, for exactly. For calling out for the fraud of the government. That we're just have. talking about it. Just yeah. talking about it, exactly. What, what can people do to help Leah and the other two activists, and, and, and this whole group of activists out in Seattle who are being targeted by this grand jury? Right now, um, the best thing to do that we have is to just send solidarity mail. Um, I have the address um, that I for all three folks that are locked up um, that I can give you right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, Let's see. Or we could post it on the uh, on the website or something like that or yeah, have it on Facebook. We have it on the Facebook group. If actually, that would probably be easier. What's, if everyone wants to. Say the name of the Facebook group so people can find it. The name of the Facebook group Do you have that? No. Is, I have it right here. It's, it's uh, Free uh, Leah Lynn Plant 
and um, Matthew Duran and Catherine or Katie. Katie O. Olenek, yeah. Olenek, yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. I see it here. You yep, can go to the one. Facebook page. We're going to post it up on the uh, on the Two Hotheads Facebook page. It's also freelia.org. But don't forget, like you said, that there are two other folks, Matt Duran and Katie O'Lanick, that are also, um, you know, in, facing jail time for this. So, or in jail Absolutely. for this, in federal custody for this. So we need to be uh, aware of that as well. Um, but yeah, solidarity mail. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so we appreciate you so much coming on the show, Frank. Do you have any? Any uh, last questions I, for Frank? Yeah, uh, I mean, um, you know, I, I know you. We were, t- yeah, sending uh, some mail would help. What about uh, contacting even the grand jury, like the people who are running the prosecutors? Is there any type of? Uh, do you think that will help at all, Frank? I um, think that any amount of pressure that can be applied will help. Um, the only thing about that is I can't provide you with the name of of who the prosecutor is or who's on the grand jury. Um, but I definitely, you know encourage people to find out that information and um, call, you know, call call the governor, you know, of, of Washington and call the governor of, of Portland, excuse me, not Portland, of Oregon, and ask them why they're allowing this kind of police state to exist in their in their states. Damn right. Yeah, we got to raise hell You know, that's a good place this. to start. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go, go, yeah. I don't know if you had more to add, but I mean, this is just, we, we really need to stop this. We need to get this these three people out of jail immediately. Like we we uh, this stuff that we let go on and on and on and on. It's like when are we just going to say enough? When are people actually going to stand up for themselves? And their brothers and sisters. Exactly. I mean. Well, that's what we're that's what we're trying to do here. So really, uh, on her free Leah dot org, she's asking for letters. She's asking. I mean, that's the type of thing. That often gets overlooked. It's like the person behind this this yeah. this uh, Cause situation. Because so. yeah, that's so good to bring up, Koo. Because the government is trying to break them right now. They're trying to isolate them from the world and, and make them feel like that they should just do what the government wants. So send a letter, send a book. Do you know it's paperback books they can receive? Send a paperback book. You know, really show your support here. Right. And, and and you know, be be concerned about this because this isn't just about sol- solidarity. It could be it's us about next. fear. I mean, it could be in, Frank, in a sense, it could be I Heather, mean, it could be me, it could be Nikki, it could be any of us that are doing what we're doing here. So if you support us, you gotta support this group of people yeah. that are really That's facing right. it right now. Yeah, well, so thanks a lot, Frank, for yeah. coming on the show. We and really appreciate before it. Before we let Frank go, I also want to bring up uh you you guys are also we we did audit the Fed recently with you. It was a huge yeah. success that we we covered it and you guys really did it. Um, you're having another event coming up in November, right? Absolutely, yeah. We're going to have uh, an, another and the and the wars and the Fed event. We're going to tie the two and uh, show how the Fed allows for endless wars uh, because they have the ability to create money out of thin air. And that's going to be on November 24th. We're going to meet at uh, 12 in the afternoon at the Common. And then we're going to march down to the Fed, and uh, we hope you all can make it out. Um, there's a Facebook page for that, too, um, National and the Wars and the Fed Day. Um, and it's going to be big. You know, the last time we were the biggest in the country, so hopefully we can be the biggest in the country again. Excellent. Right on. Absolutely. Thanks again, Frank. You rock. Thanks for having me. Anytime. You guys rock, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was Frank. Frank Capone, you know him. Oh, I don't even think we mentioned too. He's got a new radio show too on Occupy Boston Radio. I think it's ob obr dot obr yeah dot com dot org. Dot org. Sure. We'll we'll get that link too. But he's he's got a new show too, and uh, Frank's a real activist. I love having him on the show and it, good cause. We really need to step it up. I want everyone to join that event. We're gonna post it up on our groups if it's not already there, and uh, check it out and support it. Yep, definitely. I will definitely be listening. It's OccupyBoston.com. I mean, OccupyBoston.org slash radio, by the way. All right. There you, you go. go. Check that out. Of course, we uh, big ups to Unregular Radio for having us back every week. Yeah. <laughs> we love this station. We really do. It was tough last week having, having studio It made us not miss it so much. <laughs> made me miss but it so much. Back with a vengeance. And we have just enough time, speaking of vengeance, yeah. to get into this uh, question three debate. Yeah, we're going to take a break. We're, we're going to take, take a, a break. break. We're going to play one song. We're going to come back. We're going to get so into excited. question three. We've been waiting to get into this. Chomping at the bit. Yeah. we. This is like two weeks of BS. I know. I'm going to try to get the King of Pot on the phone, too.
Okay. So let's take a quick break and we'll be back. All right. Only on on regular radio. Two hotheads. Look out for the cut.